recording on and uh, welcoming everybody. It's uh, Monday, April the 10th in Maui, Tuesday, April the 11th, where many of you are. I'm Jim Mansky and happy to be here for the Open Hearted Practice Group. Um, I'm actually beyond happy. <clears throat> I'm ecstatic, I think. I think I'm dancing on the edge of the flow state, seeing you all here, especially Suda. We're gonna get a chance to hear a little bit about the India Convention in a bit. And I'm seeing new faces that uh, um, were encouraged to come here from the India Convention and seeing old friends. And so I'm just thrilled to be here and looking forward to playing with you today. Well, I'm just recovering also from having made a significant mistake at Stanton Park. And uh, I'm also recovering from having worked on my taxes for so much of today that I already have brain fog. So I'll probably screw something else up yet today. And I'm glad to see, here, see you and to hang out with you for a while. It's really energizing for me. And that sense of belonging is very sweet. So thank you for sharing your time with us. So this is a uh, practice group which means, uh, you know, there's lots of different ways people gather to, to live NBC together. And, and one way is maybe an empathy group, another might be a book study group, or, you know, there's lots of different forms. This is a form that has helped me for the last 23 years, uh, and we just call it a practice group. So the focus is on setting you up to practice uh, some aspect of nonviolent communication. And today, we, if, if things go according to plan, we're going to um, practice all what are th called the three different modes of nonviolent communication. And I'll, I'll say more about that um, when we get there. But we'll start in uh, just a moment with a chance to practice some self-connection. We have a special treat today. One of our participants, uh, Happy Ron, uh, is going to serenade us with a song. And then we'll, well, then we'll make small groups for you. So you can go to the small group and check in with each other about your response or reaction to the song and anything else that's alive in you uh, that you would like to be heard about. And then when we come back to the large group, uh, we'll have a chance to reconvene here and then we'll launch into a lesson that will last uh, with some practices that'll last the rest of our time. We go for a full two hours where we don't take a break because uh, we really trust that you know when you need a break. Um, and it might be different for deep, different people. So we trust that you'll take care of your needs. And um, if you need something to, if you need to stretch your back or turn the camera off and lay down or take a little walk and come back, any of that is perfectly fine. But if you, and if you don't want to be in a small group, then uh, put a little equal sign in front of your name, uh, like um, Richard did. And that just alerts Jory. Jory's building the groups here. Um, that that you don't that you'd prefer not to be in a small group. You'll end up going to another group, but it's just the other people that don't want to be in a small group, and so there's no expectation that you'll do anything there other than uh, hang out. Sometimes we call it the library. <clears throat> and um, then toward the end of the call, there'll be some announcements and some uh, ways of um, uh, practice during the coming week and so forth. So it's a pretty full uh, practice group, and we're really glad that you're here. So Jory's going to continue to make the small groups. Anything else you want to say before we invite Ron to sing? Yeah, um, I don't know if you mentioned about the equal sign. I did. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. All right, great, Ron, please. please. Thanks so much. My name's Happy Ron. Uh, I wrote this song in 1999 after I worked with Marshall uh, about feelings of not being enough, not being good enough. And I wrote this song for me and someone else who thought they weren't enough. The song is... You are enough. Don't think you're not enough. Don't think I want too much. You know that you move me beyond cynical to impossible. Your eyes are more than enough. They find me with their touch. Like soft rain in the night Turns typical to beautiful Why do you think there's more You would have to do When I'm 
so grateful for every part of you in a world with so much noise i live to hear your voice it echoes through my soul the story spins and my life begins your heart is quiet enough surrounds me with its love you know it moves me into more from physical to emotional you're beautiful you're enough you're enough you're enough thanks so much i'm happy ron you can find me happy ron one word anywhere on the internet Thanks for just notice how you feel now, how you feel now. having heard that song. Just check your check your oops. Check your um your body for reactions and responses to the song. And whatever you find there in your body, just greet it with warmth. And we've made some small groups for you. Uh, the, there'll be a little timer in the right-hand corner of your screen that's going to count down from nine minutes. And then there'll be an extra minute at the end to finish up your conversation. <clears throat> so that means that everybody has approximately three minutes to share your response <coughs> to share your response to the um, um, song and to sh share your honesty, while the other two people in your group, most groups are three, uh, will actually be um, having a chance to experience empathy, just to the listening presence of nonviolent communication. So there's no expectation, and actually there's no request that you say anything in response to what the other person said, that you're just with them while they're talking. And then when they're finished, they'll let you know that they're finished and they can, um, uh, then, then the next person can go. And so please track your own time uh, uh, so that everybody gets a chance to share. And then we will all come back here in about 10 minutes. All right. You'll find yourself in a room with uh, one or two other people. And we'll see you soon. In case anybody might want to cool. try it. Merlin what? Bird ID. Bye. Merlin Bird ID. Oh, right. Very cool. We know Merlin. Thank you. So welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed um, your time uh, getting a chance to practice NBC in small groups. And this is uh, for the next few minutes, we'll just have a chance to hear from everybody, uh, anybody that wants to be to share anything here with the large group. Mm. <clears throat> and, we're, and we welcome all voices. And at the bottom of the hour, for most of us, top of the hour, for some of us, we'll invite Suda to share something about her experience during the uh, India convention. But does anybody else would like to share anything about what's going on right now? Uh, yeah, Siva, go ahead. I see your hand. Okay. I just want to point out that for me, anyhow, every time there's subtitles, I have to do it again. And I don't know that everybody knows how to get subtitles. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So uh, at the bottom of your screen, <clears throat> there's a little thing that says um, uh, CC. And if or, or it says more, M-O-R-E. I don't see CC. Oh, yeah. You click on that little arrow and uh, it'll give you the opportunity to, to work on your subtitles. <clears throat> so thanks, Siva. Uh, subtitles uh, really help. Um, uh, to support clarity sometimes. <clears throat> uh, go ahead, Carolyn. Okay, well, this leads right into what I was going to make a request about. And that was that I, I and the two other lovely ladies in our group um, would like, would love to hear him sing again. I don't know his name. Um, we were, felt very rushed that we all three of us had just arrived <laughs> barely, 
and um, loved the song, the melody, uh, but could not understand the words very well. And we, uh, so now knowing the, about this little CC, that will help and we'll do that. And um, so it's just my request asking if that's possible. Yeah, you'd love to hear the song again. And I see at least one thumbs up. And so maybe uh, after we hear from Suda, uh, we'll see if that's still on the flow. And maybe uh, Happy Ron could uh, post the lyrics into the yeah. chat. And I'm happy to to point out, by the way, I, I, we haven't had very much ha happy, happening so far in the chat, but I figured out why it was disappearing the last few weeks. And I fixed it. Uh, so I don't think that the chat will disappear anymore, but I could be wrong. But I, so far, it seems to be working. At least my chat di didn't disappear when you guys uh, went to the small groups. Anybody else want to share anything? Can we move that down so that's not... Yes, please. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, Howard. Howard. <laughs> Yes. Um, well, um, this was a beautiful gift this morning. The song actually was a beautiful gift uh, because it was uh, like an answer to after, you know, departing from this convention, having built these strong connections and all of that, and then wondering how to keep, how to maintain these relationships and how to remain, be in this, you know, fullness of this beauty. And it was like kind of a reminder that the fullness is somehow in each and every one of us and staying maybe um, integral to it, uh, close to it, um, allowing it uh, to be is, is like, like the I am enough, right? That was one answer. Probably I, I was somehow that came to me and also the part that has to do with physical and emotional I also loved it so yeah I might not see everybody physically <laughs> for sure um but yeah emotionally there's a space where we meet oh, thank you I'm glad you're here I'm glad you found us I'm glad you had the chance to um express uh what's alive in you and Aaron I see your hand up. By the way, Aaron knows how to raise his hand using Zoom, which is an option. That's on the bottom of your screen as well. If you're new to Zoom, there's a little button down there that says reactions. And if you click on that, then uh, there's a little another button that gets revealed that says raise hand. Go ahead, Aaron. Hello. Thank you. Um, so I... I believe that this session has a theme about relationships, right? Yep. So I, um, would it work for you for me to say a concern or something I've, I've kind of been thinking about with a pitfall with NBC and relationships and see if you can, um, would be willing to see if you have <laughs> some resonance with it and maybe something to say to address this pitfall. Um, would that work for you for me to yeah. say it? On. yeah let's hear it yeah what can we learn so <laughs> so i i'm wondering if others have experienced this i'm actually going to put this on the the grid view in case I, so i can see other people see if other people nod their head about this is um that learning uh nbc skills and consciousness it's it has a a, a pitfall probably many pitfalls but this particular one is um kind of turning these tools and into like rules in a right wrong kind of way where it becomes kind of like this way that i should be and others should be and then i start judging people for not listening with giraffe ears or not speaking in giraffe especially someone who's been studying nbc like you know, this judgment that they should be is you know, they've been studying it. Why aren't they doing it? Exactly. So it, it's almost like in a way I was better off before I knew NBC than I am by knowing it and then falling into this pitfall. So one, I'm I'm kind of noticing kind of the the humor of the situation is one thing. And um and it's maybe the the thing is just to notice it and I mean just okay that's what i'm doing and let yeah. it go 
Um, but I'm wondering if, if others have experienced that or if you have anything, Jim and Jory, if you want to say anything about that. So I just thought since the theme is about relationships that I could ask that question. I would say for me, it's a universal experience. I think I've heard it from almost everybody that at some point in their NBC career that they've, they've noticed this particular pitfall. Mm -hmm. uh, pitfall is like a little a, a trap that you don't know is coming. Uh, and so when it happens, it's quite a surprise. And that is actually part of what stimulated today's class is our tendency to, um, uh, well, to put a really strong uh, term to it, to weaponize NVC, to turn it into, I, I love how you said it, Aaron, to, to turn it from tools into rules. And um, why we do that is, um, makes perfect sense to me. Um, because um, we've been all we've been educated in for our whole life is a domination system of right and wrong, rule following, who deserves what, and so forth. So then when we learn something like nonviolent communication or meditation or whatever religion that you happen to enjoy, and you start learning it and, 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 and benefiting from it, and it worked for you, and so then you start noticing that other people, it probably worked for them too, but they're not doing it, and they should. <laughs> That's sticky word there and, and should yeah yeah and to make it even worse if only they would do nbc then i could be happy right? Mm -hmm. and right. if only they would empathize with me when i was upset if only they would be honest with me so i know what their needs are if only they would stay self-connected and regulate themselves then i could be happy and so forth and so all that makes perfect sense to me that that would happen and for me it's a stage it's a it's, <laughs> it might even be a necessary stage uh, uh -huh. because as you said eventually we kind of notice that we're doing that and then maybe we can make a new choice from that does that make sense to you Aaron it does yeah and, and um I think it is a stage too I, I don't know if you've heard of or and or participated at Landmark uh or asked, oh my God. Uh, but back a couple decades <laughs> or more. <laughs> yeah, well, that training is has uh, had iterations since then, and it's around in a, a company called Landmark Worldwide now, oh, okay. and um, which I've participated in, and I kind of went through those stages with that, with uh, with what you're talking about, where it, I call it a clunky stage. Yeah, it's a <laughs> and, clunky um, stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and and I've noticed it with NBC too, and I I'm still clunky at times. Yep. So am I. After 23 years, I'm afraid it's not going to go away. Yeah. But, uh, I, I expect hope... to fix them so long, and it doesn't change. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll keep working out. Hopefully, the tools we get today will be a, a little um, a little boost uh, to get over that learning yeah. learning hump. That's the goal for today. Yeah. To have one... Thank you. Yeah. To make one little inch of progress towards that. We'll hear from Gustavo now if you're finished, Aaron. Well, I, the goal of NBC is to be progressively less stupid, exactly. to quote Marshall. Exactly. Yeah. And not I, to be perfect, not to be perfect, but to be progressively less stupid. Exactly. Yeah. I appreciate you speaking up and bringing that forth. I think that probably resonates with a lot of people, including Thank people you. who are skilled sometimes falling down that rabbit hole again. <laughs> And oh, and also just to empathize with being on the other end of the one who's being judged for not doing NBC good enough. That's a really painful place to be, especially if you're a trainer and, a, and you make a mistake and people will have very high expectations of how you show up in the world and you should never get upset or you should, you should, 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 whatever the shoulds are. Yeah. Right. Does, does that expectation sometimes call you forth to to bring your practice, bring your A game to your practice? Absolutely. Does it have that as well? That, that's yeah. that's my aim yeah. is to use that okay. as an opportunity to practice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's kind of both sides of it. Absolutely. The front of the hand, the back of the hand. Absolutely. Yeah. There's just a gap sometimes in waking up to realizing you need to work on something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I understand. But I, but okay. Thank you. Know. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that forth. Go ahead, Gustavo, and then Suda. Um, just uh, real quick to add what uh, Aaron was saying. Um, I used to be, well, 
still <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm some sometimes like that and what i remember myself is a phrase that i heard to somebody in a in a workshop that says only a jackal identified another jackal <laughs> so when i'm when i'm saying okay that's the jackal i say oh careful it's your jackal we identify the other people's jack <laughs> that's the first thing and and another thing i want to share is uh something that I, a realization that i had recently and it's about what Aaron was saying. So when, when we get to nonviolent communication, we try to make the process and say, okay, I'm gonna express my needs. And I said, for example, you have a, a conflict with somebody and you say, okay, because I need support, I need to be heard, I need, but what you're saying in your head really is you need, I, I want you to support me, I want you to hear me, I want you to, right? That's what's in your head, but you're trying to make nonviolent communication. But it's just when you realize that the need is your, is your need, because you are needing that because of something that happens to you in the past. And, and when you identify in, in yourself that it's nothing to do with the other person, really, then I give you, opens the space of humbling to say, okay, this is mine. This is nothing to do with the other person. And then you can, you'll be open to listen and to have empathy for the other person. So I, I wanna share. Thanks. Thank you Double. so much. Thank you. And uh, we'll finish with Monish and then go to Suda. Thank you. Um, about relationships, uh, one of the, one of, one of the shares that I've, or learnings I've had along the way, um, one being uh, from a story that I'd seen in a TED talk. Um, it was about uh, a woman describing that uh, she had some kind of a conflict with her mother. And uh, so I think it was one of her siblings which told her that, hey, in this situation, if you would have to choose between the relationship and being right, what would you choose? Um, and that really struck her. And, and she realized she valued the relationship more than being right. And uh, I've kind of had a chance to not just see that video and also use this in my own life. And I think it has been really a blessing because I have realized uh, in and part of just working in in or even in work lives in general, life is a lot about people and relationships, and uh, especially in times of pressure, when pressure gets the better of you, uh, you know, being mindful about this as a maybe like a guideline or you know as a principle or however one may want to see it, do you care about the relationship or do you care about being right? Uh, yeah. That is really like you know helpful to me to at least navigate those challenges better, at least attempt to navigate those those challenges better along the way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I would say it makes a lot of, of sense to me, Monish. Mm, thank you. Yeah. And you. Uh, Suda. Um, thank you. Thank you. I'm actually, my heart is singing and my, uh, and dancing at, um, at, uh, at the end of the convention, I got back home uh, at about midnight last night and I uh, slept about a little over five hours ago and I jumped up and I knew that, I, I, that this, there is this practice group and I wanted to be here because I cannot at all, I cannot ex express my gratitude in full uh, at the way this group has contributed to the convention this time. Um, it made it so easy for us to offer scholarships. We offered about, we had 77 participants uh, from around 15 countries counting the trainers. And um, it is just joyful. It was a joyful reunion. Uh, more than half of them, close to 38 or 40 people were first timers. So for many of them, and I see at least about eight or 10 of them here in this group, um, for many of them, it was such a different experience and just the joy of being together. Uh, the India Convention is about building community and I think we, we nailed it this time. I want to express my very deep gratitude to all of you who contributed to this in, in a very big way. And um, it's, uh, it's modeled on the, the framework is modeled on the IIT and there was so much of connection and um, getting to know each other. I, 
heartfelt thanks to you. And I'm hoping that the next time we hold it, which is, it's an annual convention, there'll be more of us and we'll get to see each other in person. In person is something different. I'm really glad for the online community because I would never have met many of you. And in person is a different flavor altogether. Thank you, Jim, Jory, for opening up the space, for create, helping me create, helping us in the trust create this. Um, I, I, I really have no words for this. Yeah. And thank you so much for all that you did to make this happen. And all of you who showed up for this, I'm really touched. That's a gift to me too, that that happened. And I'm sorry I wasn't there. It would have been nice. Mm -hmm. Not quite yet. <laughs> it, it, it's so wonderful, actually, to, to take in your word Uda, and to give people uh, the many of the people on the call are were the contributors to help to make life more wonderful. You know, Marshall's dream was that we all take responsibility for uh, creating the world of our choosing. And you guys actually supported Suda in her mission to support um, uh, people who came to the convention in making progress uh, in creating the world that they're choosing. So thank you for letting us know how it affects you, Suda, and, and, and how it went for you. Anything else come up for you that you'd like to share? Yes, just one more thing, a detail I would like to share that uh, we had 77 participants and we needed, I, I'll say it in rupees because I haven't got the convert to this thing. We needed about 12 lakh rupees to make this um, make this work. And uh, we got we got about uh, five lakhs from you uh, and, and uh, another four lakhs from the participants who contributed. And then we had some money at the, in the trust itself. And most important that we were able to offer 29 scholarships amounting to about three lakhs. Uh, so for me, it was a win-win all the way through and a deep, deep uh, bow of gratitude to all of you. Wow. Wonderful it, to take that in. Thank you. It would not have happened with so much ease as it did without your contribution. And just holding a, a convention in a distant place or in a different land altogether, um, just trusting that the, what you contribute will really serve humanity. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all of you who did uh, donate to this cause. Uh, we, ra we raised about $6,000 uh, US. Uh, and um, it, like, like we just heard, it made a big difference. 30 people uh, got to go to that convention that wouldn't have otherwise uh, been able to go. So thank you. Let's celebrate with us with the song again from Happy Ron. And then we'll move into the class if, you're, if you are still willing to do that. Happy Ron. <laughs> oh, certainly. Can you tell me real quickly? Um, uh, can you hear me? Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, when I do it, yep. people said they couldn't hear the words or whatever. But okay. I'll just try and get closer to mic. Make sure. Yeah. Don't think you're not enough. Don't think I want too much. You know that you move me beyond cynical. Possible. Your eyes are more than enough. They find me with their touch. Like soft rain in the night turns typical to beautiful. Why do you think there's more? You would have. I'm so grateful for every part of you in a world with so much noise I live to hear your voice it echoes through my soul the story spins and my life begins your heart is quiet enough surrounds me with you know it moves me into more from physical to emotional you're beautiful you're enough you're enough you're enough thank you thank you thank you yeah. <laughs> 
if you'd like the first time I've ever played a song twice in a row. <laughs> That's funny. I, I'm glad, I'm glad that we got much deeper for me. Much deeper for me. All right, thank you. But thanks for the request. Well, thanks for the request. Yeah. So just take it in. If you want to share uh, anything about it, uh, you can share it directly with Ron in the chat. Uh, you can either do that privately or you can do it uh, publicly so that we can all read it. If you're not familiar with Zoom, there's a little button on the bottom that says chat. It opens up like a direct uh, a direct message system, kind of like a, uh, any other kind of message system that you can <laughs> chat with. <clears throat> so that's that. So let's dive into the practice now <clears throat> and uh, see if we can get through the whole thing. I hope so. I'm sharing my screen with you. <clears throat> the topic today is called the relationship as a spiritual practice and it's um it, it comes on the heels of several other uh, trainings that we've been offering uh during this practice group uh, for the whole year and so now we're kind of going a little bit deeper into some of the things we touched on uh in previous classes and i like to just begin with this quote from uh, Marshall Rosenberg. Marshall, of course, the founder of nonviolent communication. Uh, and the quote goes like this. <clears throat> I think it's important that people see that spirituality is at the base of nonviolent communication and that they learn the mechanics of the NBC process with that in mind. It's really a spiritual practice that I'm trying to show as a way of life. Would you read it in a feminine voice? Would you be willing? I'll try. I'm pretty exhausted, but I will. Um, I think it's important that people see that spirituality is at the base of nonviolent communication and that they learn the mechanics of the MVC process with that in mind. It's really a spiritual practice that I'm trying to show as a way of life. Thank you. So the person that you're in relationship with, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship like this, or whether it's just a, a stranger, a so-called stranger that you happen to be sitting next to on the bus or the train or on a park bench, they're your spiritual teacher because you, they're in relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And so how are they your, your spiritual teacher? Yeah. Because they're going to show you exactly where your demands are. Without them, you would never discover these things about yourself. I, I, I was thinking about something that I read from a, a Buddhist teacher, uh, Pema Chodron. I read this, I, I discovered Pema about the same time as I discovered NVC about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And she, there's this concept in Buddhism uh, called the ego or the separate self. <clears throat> and, um, the, you know, the idea is that you, somehow you become free of this thing called the ego or whatever. <clears throat> but I like what, what Pema, how Pema de described the metaphor of what having an ego is like, or a separate self. That having an ego is like designing a house that's just perfect for you. The has it's the right color. It's uh, got just the, the 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 most perfect landscaping, the right number of rooms. Uh, the ceiling is the right height. It's got just the the appliances and and um, so forth that you need. It's in the neighborhood that you like and so forth. So it's just absolutely perfect. And um, <clears throat> so that's what our ego is, is we're, we're trying to like craft a place that is a safe place where nobody can hurt us. And then we end up running into uh, somebody and then <laughs> we find out uh, that um Oh, maybe their porch is a little bit uh, lower than I thought it should be, or what, whatever. However, you want to extend the the metaphor, mm -hmm. and so um, that's that's what we're going to work on today, and we're going to use these three different modes of spiritual practice that Marshall is pointing to, 
these are familiar to anybody who's been studying NBC, but we're going to have hopefully a direct experience of these three things, uh, self-empathy, empathy, and honesty. And Aaron, uh, you have a question come up? I do. So I, I heard you say that others it, that we're in relationship with, whether that's a significant other or someone on the bus, there are spiritual teachers because they show us what our demands are. So what I kind of am making up about that is that they they show us where to, they show me where my demands are based on how they react to me, and if they react in a way, of, oh that that was a demand. But I, I'm wondering if you can unpack it a little bit. I'm just telling you kind of what I am making up about how they how they show me where my demands are. But can you unpack that a little bit about how they show us where our demands are? I will, but it might take me an hour and 15 minutes to do it. But yes, <laughs> the, the, when we go through the whole practice, hopefully by the end, you will you will have the clarity that um, I, I share the same uh, uh, hope for clarity that you just expressed. And hopefully the practice okay. will clarify it. If it doesn't, then let me know towards the end. And then I'll just try to use words. But I think you you discovering it would be way more powerful than me trying to pour it into your head. So are you willing to just try the practice and see? Yes. See? Sure. Sure. Okay. So the practice will address what you yes. what that. Okay. That's okay. A, All right. That, thank you that, for that, highlighting it. That's yeah. the plan. Yep. Oh, okay. Perfect. Thanks. Let Let's start with um, self empathy practice. And. Um, so first, pick an ongoing relationship that you mostly enjoy. So it could be a partner, could be your parent, could be a kid. But just pick one that you're willing to work with right now. You're, you might want to write it down just to give you an anchor when you go back and look at your notes. But you don't need to share this with anybody else. This is private. <clears throat> and then name the person and how you are involved. And so I'm going to guide Jory through this practice, uh, all these practices today. Oh, you're guiding me. Yes. Oh, okay. So uh, who's the person? You. Okay. And, <laughs> and how are you involved? Um, we live together and we share our finances together. Okay. So notice what Jory did. She just made an observation. She didn't evaluate me at all yet, other than with a little, um, a little <laughs> nonverbals. <laughs> she named me and she named how we're involved. So that's, that's what, that's what we're looking for here. It's just this practice of observation. There might be a chance to evaluate them eventually, but we'll start with this. I'm going to be very authentic here. <laughs> and then, um, how do you wish I was different? Name one thing. I wish that you would make a distinction between our personal expenses and our corporate expenses and not use those credit cards differently than what they're assigned as. Okay, so now she's expressing it as a wish, right? So what do you wish in the relationship that you chose? How do you wish they were different? How would you like to remodel them? I'll be quiet for a couple of minutes while you think about it and um, do some writing about that. Richard, do you have a question for Clarity? Yes, please. Uh, is this how I wish they would be different in general or to me? Um, well, yeah, you, you, yes. You, you could do it either, <laughs> either way. <laughs> but, but it might be more powerful. What I notice about my NBC practice is the more specific I am uh, to not only who, but where and when and what, then the clearer the practice usually is. Mm -hmm. But you can try it any way you like, and you can always do it you know, you know, different way next time. Yeah, it can be something as simple as, 
I wish they'd wear a red shirt instead of a blue shirt. I wish they'd, um, you know, cover the compost after they finish putting the garbage in it. I wish they'd take the garbage out when they say they did. Stuff like that. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. It probably helped other people too. Notice that the suggestion is to name one thing. This is to avoid the temptation of building a case or create an, creating an enemy image. So if you just keep it to one thing, then you make your self-empathy a lot easier. And is that uh, Kulanit? 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 I see you. Go ahead and go ahead. Okay. Yes. Yep. Hi. Can I just ask? Thank you. Can I just ask um clarifying questions? Sure, go ahead. Because I'm really new at the, at this and trying to understand. Um. So when you answer the question of like how you are involved, you said to keep it with no judgment. Yes. Yeah. So not like, the, can I say not the right or wrong? Just what you see here. Taste, smell, touch, what you know, what your senses have picked up. Yeah. So I'm I'm involved with my boss, uh, you know, because I work for him. I'm involved with my kid because um, they came to live with me. Um, I'm involved with my um my neighbor because we live next door to each other and so forth. Just just a simple description for yourself. Does that make sense? Okay. Yep, thank you. So, Dory, now when you consider how you want your wish for me, what comes up for you in terms of feelings and needs? <sighs> the, the feeling is exhaustion. And there's also frustration and annoyance. And the needs are um, some reliability, ease, clarity, ah, simplicity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you do the same thing with your observation. First, connecting to your own body and noticing any sensations and any emotions that arise, don't worry about your thinking right now. We're just gonna stay with the body. So first notice what's going on in your body when you think about how you wish this other person would be different. Maybe it's frustration, annoyance, irritation, anger, hurt. Disappointment. Overwhelm. And then connect your feelings to your needs. In other words, consider what's important to you. Why are you, why are you wishing the other person would be different? What would be the gift to you if the other person was different. You can use this needs list if you want to. You don't have to use it. And you don't have to use a word that's on this list, but it might be helpful. So for me, the gift would be ease, clarity, well-being. Okay, now we're gonna do something unexpected. We're gonna invite you to state your wish as a demand. <clears throat> so we're gonna make conscious what might not always be conscious. And so 
the structure of a demand is something like uh, Jim should keep his um, credit card straight. We'll just try to keep it simple like that. Yeah. Jim exactly. should keep his credit cards straight. Um, and if he what he means by straight is you use your business card for your business, your personal card for your personal. And so it usually starts with the word should or have to. Or somewhere that's in the, in the sentence, the demand. And in your mind is a consequence if they don't. What would you like to do to them if you actually had the power? No. <laughs> can, you, can, we use bad, can we use bad words? This is where you would be evaluating. You might be doing some evaluating here. Um, but mostly what we're looking for is the urge to punish the other person. So you wish that I would use, um, uh, you actually demand. This is not the first time I've heard this, by the way. Yeah, it's not the first time I've had to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> just, but you just can't quite get this, this the paint color right on the side of the house here. <laughs> just not cooperating. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so um, what do you think might teach me a lesson? If you could like teach me a lesson with punishment, what would be the consequence? Maybe take my credit cards away from me? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, there you, there go. you go. Yeah. So what would be, you know, if you could, if you could force the other person and you think that punishment worked, what how would you what, what would be the punishment that you would like to apply to them? Um, Amalia, you have a fresh question? Yes, I do. Thank you so much. Let's say I never address somebody you should. I always say, can you please? But it doesn't mean I don't have a demand. It still can be a demand. Like, can you please do that? Because I'm very frustrated. Yeah. Um, we, thank you for, for helping to clarify. Let me put our, turn this off for a second. So you're, <clears throat> so the, the, the distinction in nonviolent communication between a request and a demand there are there are a couple, but the one that's most important here is that demands always, by definition, com contain a threat of punishment or a punishment. That's what makes it a demand, not the tone of your voice and not the feeling that you feel, but the consequence of the other person failing to comply with your demand. So, for example, Which means I never have a demand. Uh, maybe you don't. If you don't, then we should change seats. You know? <laughs> uh, you know, so. the, I can tell you the tone of my voice. It's good enough for people. Yeah. They feel it less than they meant. There you go. Yeah, so th that's one of the weapons that we can use is uh, if you don't uh, fill in the blank, whatever your demand is, then I'm going to yell at you. That's a punishment for a lot of people. I don't, I Rich, don't yell either. <laughs> Raise your hand here if you wake up in the morning hoping that someone yells at you today in anger. That this is the first thing that you think of when you get out of bed. Gosh, I sure hope my wife, you know, uh, yells at me today. You know, it's probably but I'm saying I I I don't yell. I just changed the tone a bit. I said, "Can you please don't hang up the phone without saying goodbye?" That yeah. frustrates me a lot. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the tone doesn't make them feel comfortable because I could see the reaction when I say that. Yeah. It's it, like, oh, you're you're taking me to into high points. You you want too much from me. Yeah. Yeah. Now now listen, we can't tell whether Amali is making a demand, even as she's describing it. There's no way from the outside that we can tell whether Amalia is making a demand. Only she knows if it's a demand. And the way she knows is because she notices there's an urge to punish. I notice the reaction of people because the intent for me, it's not on demand, it's a clarifying thing, but because I'm frustrated and I'm not at zero point, 
my tone changes. I don't scream because I don't scream. I'm pretty control freak, let's put it this way. So I just put my tone a bit, like I put it now, yeah? yeah. It's not a nice, peaceful tone. It's like, can you please don't hang up this phone? I yeah. feel frustrated every time you do. Yeah. And that doesn't make it a demand. You can be very mm -hmm. persistent mm -hmm. with what your need is. And you might use a strong tone, what we might all agree is a strong tone of voice, maybe even, um, you know, um, um, uh, certain nonverbal cues as well. But the only thing that makes it a demand is if you if you want to punish the other person or if you do punish them, if they don't comply with your demand. I'm never going to talk to you. I can tell you what exactly I'm doing. I don't punish people, but I'm just not answering the calls unless I'm in an outstanding mood because yeah. I don't want my mood to go down. And I never tell them. That means I don't punish themselves. Some punish, I sometimes may punish myself because I feel like talk with, the, with them, but I don't want my joyful mood to go down. Yeah. So I'm not answering. Yeah. So how this qualifies? Doesn't qualify in any of these steps? Um, the the thing that at this level, at, I mean, at this point in the process, all you're looking for as, as you follow the steps that we're proposing today is that you see if you can find this urge to punish in your mind. It's always going to be in your mind. You might feel it in your body like a clenched fist or a constricted heart or gritting teeth or, you know, folding your arms or the something like that. But there's this urge that if I could just like Joy did it earlier, if I could just, you know, you can kind of <laughs> get that that feeling in your body. If I could just teach them a lesson. That's what makes it a demand that is the only thing that makes it a demand. Mm -hmm in NBC. Other people may use the word in a different way, but that's the definition of a demand is a demand is always linked to punishment, not tone of voice. I don't, I don't believe in punishment. Yeah. Well, that just, but, you're, you're in the right place because I don't think, um, I don't, I, no, no study has ever shown that punishment works. All it does is destroy relationships as far as I can tell. So, I see, so I, 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 I see a few hands up. <clears throat> I am, Thank you very much. I am hesitant to answer any more questions till we finish the practice. So see if you can write a note to yourself um, and, uh, and and see if the question gets answered in the practice. <clears throat> Otherwise, we won't get through we it. We still have one hand. Right? That's an old hand. Okay. So now we've stated our wish as a demand. Say it to yourself three times. Joy doesn't have to do this part out loud, of course. And how does it feel in your body when you talk to yourself in a in that with that demand language? It's interesting. And only the first time was there a real demand energy in it. So give me a second again on that. Um, yeah, it, I feel a constriction. Mm -hmm. I felt it with the with the first one, which is that which is why I let it go. But that constriction, that intensity, you know, like ah. Yeah. And what's your need? What needs are alive in you now? Uh, needs for ease, um, well-being. It's interesting, consideration, but that's hardly a need because that's more of what I am expecting from somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, so a need for... Yeah, I think ease just really ease really resonates really, for you. Resonates. Yeah, and so now you do the same thing. You say the demand or think the demand. Some of us are image makers, so you might just imagine, and then notice how it affects your body, and then connect it again to your needs. Yeah, I know how it affects.
So this is the essence of self-empathy. You're not trying to fix yourself. You're not trying to change the other person. You're not trying to change how you feel. All those things might happen as effects of your self-empathy, but the purpose of self-empathy is simply to compassionately be with your emotional experience. Mm -hmm. So if you're angry, you be with yourself angry. If you're hurt, you be with yourself hurt. And so just to clarify what the, if you want a three word description of self-empathy, it's first you notice that you feel separate. Either you have noticed a thought of anger or a feeling of constriction in your chest, the urge to punish. So first step is always to notice it. Second, name it. You don't have to name it to the other person. You're just, this is self-empathy. You're naming it to yourself. And then the third part of self-empathy is to allow it or embrace it or welcome it, whatever word works for you. To compassionately be with yourself. And the way that the shortcut to doing that is to connect it to a need. That's what makes you human is having needs. And what makes, makes you alive, it's actually even being beyond human. Mm -hmm. Everything that's alive has needs. And so it unites you with all life. It dissolves separateness when you notice, name, and allow. So what happens for you as you notice, I haven't changed yet. The house is still needs a paint job. <laughs> but what's going on in your body now that you notice name and allow well i i feel some exhaustion but there's also a, a sense of acceptance and relaxation around it yeah okay so that's that's not the end of the nbc process that that's like the first phase of a connected process we start with connecting with ourselves to then begin to open up to connect with other people so now i'll pause and see if those questions are still alive for gustavo or aaron or there's still yeah. a hand up for kulanith i'm not sure if that's an old hand or a new hand i think it's an old hand so i'm going to just put your hand down go ahead uh aaron whoops you're still muted i hope you the person who oh there we go yeah. Okay. Ready? Go ahead. Um, okay. Uh, so you said a, a couple of times wanting to teach them something or to educate them, to teach them a lesson. Um, and you also said that what makes a demand, a demand is that, that you would punish, you like an urge to punish them. Mm -hmm. So wanting to educate someone that in and of itself that's not a distinguishing factor of a demand like so i'm wondering if you can um yeah uh um, so, so, say, say 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 like when is wanting to educate someone an indication that i have a demand going on and when is so i wanting to educate someone not a demand it's, it's so how, it's how you enforce the education Okay. So, so like, see, um, how do I say this? So, offer? so if you think about, let's, let, let's, let's think about um, something that doesn't involve anybody here. Let's think about um, um, there's two kids playing in the playground. They're both four or five years old. And uh, one kid comes over and uh, takes the, the toy away from the other kid. And the, the, that the kid who just lost the toy reaches out and smacks the kid that took the, um, uh, took, took the toy. toy from him, right? So why did the kid smack the other kid? In NBC, we would say that every behavior is rooted in a need. So what need 
was the kid trying to meet when he smacked the other kid. Any, anybody got yeah, any Maybe guesses? some, maybe for, uh, it could be, I mean, a couple comes to mind. One is trying to teach him that, that the other kid shouldn't have taken his toy. Right. It could right. also be a need for status. Like he lost status by having his toy taken away in order to gain status back. He he hits the other kid, gets yeah. his status back. Yeah. Right. So putting that one aside for the second, the first one you said is the is the um, the general motivation for punishment is we want to teach the other person a lesson that if they really got how hard this was uh, through experiencing pain themselves, then they would never do that again. Right. Right. And it works great. In Temporarily. It just destroys relationships in the process. Yeah, it works actually, you know, um, uh, we've all had the experience probably of trying to punish somebody. It's just so baked in to the way we were educated. Even if it's not, right. even if it's not corporal punishment, hitting kids, we were all uh, reinforced with either stern looks, yell, getting yelled at, getting humiliated, uh, um, withdrawing love, all this in the service of trying to teach somebody a lesson. So that's, that's how we can start developing empathy for ourselves when we have those punitive thoughts. Okay, I understand. Right. And, and then when would, when would educating be, what, like wanting to educate someone not be with a demand? When they want to be educated. Okay. Yeah. When it's like in this situation, like I'm actually asking you and I'm wanting to learn exactly. this. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But if you were like, Aaron should know this and I'm going to, right. He won't, if he doesn't get this, he won't get to come to other sessions or. Right. Or I'm going to block him. I'm going to block him. <laughs> I'm going to make sure this <laughs> connect again. Yeah. That, that, that's the spirit. No. Thank you. Okay. Aaron. I got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, Gustavo. Um, Jim, uh, about what just Aaron said, one way of, of um, educating with no punishment wouldn't be to say, for example, for that kid to say how he feels about it and to ask for, make a petition and not a demand. That's a way to educate the other, peer, the other person on the feelings and the needs and the, and the connections. That's, it could yeah. be that a way to educate, not, not punishing. Yeah, you're 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 anticipating the next the next thing that's likely to happen. Once we do some self empathy, then we our intuition might be to either express our honesty or to express our empathy. And so we're going to keep going with the practice, which is different than education. Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe because it could be mutual education. So that's what kind of what I'm aiming at. But, let, let's but, just... but there's this place where we we share exactly what is going on for us yeah. or and our observations yeah in the service in the, yeah. the service of connection yeah yeah you got it that's how i would say it too yeah so okay so let's keep going here with the practice unless there's any other questions about the self-empathy part uh i just just want to add sorry jim uh, i put in the chat but uh and about the be careful that when you you're not withdrawing your love yeah. because that's a, a strategy that the ego uses it's hidden to hide a punishment no i'm i'm no i'm retiring myself for the situation but no you're you what you're doing really is withdrawing your love from the other person yeah. so yeah. yeah, withdrawing love is a very um, um, powerful form of punishment. And we've probably all experienced it at some point. And it's like taking poison and hoping it's going to affect the other person. Yeah. Okay, so I'm right. looking at the chat, seeing if there's anything else that I missed, but I think we're okay. So let's keep going. One, so one more question. Oh, sure. sure. Um, with the self-empathy, it's uh, step one, notice. You uh, notice, notice it. Um, name it, allow it. So noticing is noticing the sep noticing you feel separate, constriction, the urge to punish. 
is the naming it um does that mean naming the feelings yeah. that you're no, naming what you're feeling notice naming what you're noticing yeah it and could then be. allowing it, it okay it could be Got the it. Naming could be the observation the feeling and the need about um it could be just the feeling Sometimes that's enough to really get reconnected. Sometimes okay. the observation is enough to get connected, and sometimes the need. Sometimes all three. But the but the 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 reason that you're naming it is to sort of um, uh, well, I I don't know if uh, the the effect is it settles the nervous system a little bit. Yeah, I think there's some brain science with it actually that I wrote about. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And Rena. You know, I'm uh, very alive with what Gustavo shared um, in my relationship with my adult daughter, one of them, where again, you know, it's the impact of my silence. So I might be doing my inner process and kind of connecting with, you know, it, it sometimes it stimulates sudden, um, a, a, a comment stimulates sudden kind of constriction, you know? that you, and, and for me, um, I might be in self-empathy, but the impact on her um, is, is like, now don't, now don't sulk, or now don't, you know, give me the silent treatment. Yeah. And I get shocked again, that, wow, is this how you're seeing this? Yeah. So <laughs> another first aid empathy to me, yeah. And then I think I've learned now uh, that it's a sign that she needs empathy. Yeah. So rather than you know, it's it's like a like a one two three so fast that it helps to say that okay, whatever it is, it, it's 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 time for it's I can I need to give her empathy. Yeah. I want to listen. You know. Thank so, you. Thank you, Gustavo. And um, yeah, it's 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 hard being a parent. You wonder when that that role ends, uh, you know. But it it somehow it's just a continuous healing that the the family does or the parent and child does throughout life. Yeah. And bills, as you remember, I remember your, Jim. You saying it's 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 intergenerational trauma to intergenerational resilience. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Rena and Sue. Um, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm worried that we're going to run out of time, so I'm going to I'm going to cut it off after Sue, so we get a chance to do the next practice. Go ahead, Sue. You're on mute. Okay, I'll try to make it quick. The difference between removing love when you feel um, you're trying to protect yourself from maybe somebody who has an addiction or a problem or is verbally abusive. Um, and I'm right in the middle of that situation where I'm trying to draw boundaries, but I feel the stress inside me because I know I'm not communicating fully in a way that's up to the level of the work you guys are presenting. And, um, but I, maybe I need to go to Alan on more because I maybe they talk about this, but um, so I, I that's where I'm at, and I'll just see yeah. where your practices take us. With this. Okay, great. And just, just you're absolutely right. At the at this low at this point where we are right now in the process, we're just at the self empathy place. We're not taking okay. any action yet. We're just being with ourselves, and then okay, then we may make some choices based on that self empathy to leave a dangerous situation. I hope so. I mean, that would be yeah. my recommendation. So yeah. And, and or it might be, might be mildly dangerous, like exhausting, you know, yeah. or just draining or repetitious. It's not moving forward. Yeah. And um, so, okay. Yeah. And again, the only person who knows whether it's a demand or not is the person who's behaving. You can't tell from outside yet. Okay. Maybe, maybe someday AI will let us know or something. I don't know. But <laughs> I can't imagine anybody's ever going to be able to read my heart as well as I can. So let's keep going now with the empathy part. Now that we're connected to our own needs, make a guess about the feelings and the needs of the other, other person. 
So just imagine them behaving in the way that they behave that you didn't like. So Joy, here I am. You, now you're doing the taxes and you're confronted with the same mistake I made last year where I used the wrong credit card for some expense and it's slowing you down on your taxes. And you're really connected to your own needs. Um, and for, you know, and well-being. And what do you guess is my needs when I'm out there in the world uh, doing using credit cards to buy stuff? My guess is that you're out there wanting to contribute and to um, support what your life work is. Yeah. So she may not agree with my strategy, but she can at least get connected to my needs. So now we often joke that this is the PhD part of NBC, where you, in, in, in a practice group, you may or may not have enough self-empathy to take the next step, but we're gonna assume that you do. And just make a guess about what needs you imagine the other person is trying to meet when they behave the way they are. You don't have to guess right. And you don't have to get too analytical. Just make a guess of what, what they're hoping for when they behave in the way that they do or did. Just notice your body as you shift your attention just to think in this way. What, what do they need? This is a radical shift from what did they do wrong to what do they need? And just notice how that lands in your body. So then you return to self-empathy after you make this empathic guess. You're not necessarily saying the empathy out loud yet. You're just connecting to the possible need. And then the next step would be, how could you say that using your own words, not some NVC mechanical formula? Like Jory said, I imagine you're wanting to contribute to your mission. Maybe you're wanting some ease, something like that. So how would you express your empathy to the other person? If you want to make your empathy guesses in the chat, sometimes that can be supportive for other people. All you need to do is say the need words, maybe the feeling words too. But you want to, if you want to put your whole sentence in, that's also okay. Base is the one need I see so far. Authenticity, peace, balance, healing, space, flow, rest, play, understanding. I'm guessing you're, guessing you're taking care of your health. Safety to matter, ease, nurturance. Sometimes even need words might, people might be a little allergic to need words. So you might come up with some more um, common ways of saying it. Like I'm guessing you're taking care of your health. Nothing in there looks like an official need off of the needs list. And yet it's pointing to this beautiful need we all share for self-responsibility, self-care, well-being, so forth. Contribution and understanding, attention to be heard. And then again, notice your body, go back to self-empathy again and notice how your body feels just by considering expressing your empathy, your empathic understanding towards the other person. 
So now we set ourselves up for where we've been heading the whole day, which is honesty. So now we're going to chance to express to the other person. Um, hang on a second. Uh, what's what's most alive in us that we would like to share? And so um, let me make this a little bit easier so you don't get overwhelmed with steps. So now that you've connected to the other person's needs, first step is, do you still wish they would change? Now, now you're connected to your needs, Jory, for ease and um, well-being, and you're connected to my needs, maybe for choice and contribution. Do you still wish I would change my behavior? Yes, Okay. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe maybe it shifts for you. You don't really, you move towards acceptance that the other person just is the way they are, or maybe you still want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. You still wish they would change. There's no correct answer here. Yeah. You just notice. I'm noticing it without the right wrong. Just very clearly the need for ease and support and clarity. Yeah. Yeah. So consider that for yourself. I'm not attached to a particular strategy, but I want us to work out some strategy that works for both of us. Yeah. So let's just assume you still want them to change. Uh -uh. So the, if yes, how might you express your honesty? And the most important part is ending on a clear and present request. So let, let's build your, your honesty um, one step at a time. First, reconnect with how you feel when the other person behaves in a way they don't like, you don't like. Reconnect to your own needs. And keep an open heart to the needs that I'm trying to meet. And what's your intuition about what you might say to me in your own words about your honesty? Well. I really appreciate all that you are doing. And um, I definitely want to support that and partner in that with you. And at the same time, um, I find taxes incredibly stressful, especially when I can't find the information that I need. And so I, I just uh, would really wish that we could sit down and get some clarity about what, how, how we can keep things with, with more simplicity. And, and how's that for you to hear? So um, I notice that I'm touched and open to having this kind of a conversation. We'll just pause the role play there. So notice what Jory did. <clears throat> In fact, let me just stop. What did you notice that Jory did? Who, who can say, what did you see that Jury did that you sense contributed to connection? You can put that in the chat. You can raise your hand. What did Jury do or say that you think? Yeah, Siva. She calmed herself enough that she could find hope in what triggers her over and over and over again. And so she's giving you another chance, Jim, and I'm going to speak for me and maybe for Jory. This is a good example, but you could find other good examples. Why don't you search for them and let and 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 listen to her heart? Thank you, Siva. Yeah. So you know what you noticed is that Jory's self-empathy settled her nervous system enough to be able to open the conversation. What else did you notice, Gustavo? She was completely honest in what was she was feeling and what she was wanting and what she was needing yeah. in that moment. 
Yeah, she was honest. She shared vulnerably her feelings and her needs. Yeah, there's one more thing that I noticed that she did. I wonder if anybody else caught it. Two more things, actually. Anybody? Julia? Juliana? Juliana, I mean, sorry, but did, did you have your hand up? Then, uh, okay, yes, I did. Um, Excuse me, Juliana. You might you might need to turn. Uh, hang on, hang she on. started with acknowledging your needs first, like you know. Uh, we, we you got me, hang, Juliana. Hang, hang, Juliana, hang, hang we need you shut your your video so that we can hear what you're not, saying. It's not clear. Yeah, turn your video off. What happened? Turn your video off so we can hear your audio. So I, I said first, first jury acknowledge. Okay, one minute, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so okay. So go. first, uh, jury uh, acknowledged your needs. Do you hear me now? Yes. Yes, yes. Perfectly. And then, yeah. So first, she acknowledged your needs, Jim. Mm -hmm. Then she expressed her needs. Mm -hmm. And finally, she asked you, uh, the request was, uh, her request to you was, how was it for you to hear what yep. I shared? You got it. Yep. You got all the, all the things that I was going to, um, to highlight. Thank you. Thank you, Juliana. And, so, uh, thank you. Cool. Yeah. So um, there's three kinds of requests that Jory could make. A confirmation request, a feedback request, and an action request. And I'm going to explain what all three mean. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to go back to small groups and talk about how you might write it in your own language. And we could start with number three because that's the one I used. No, you actually did number two. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the first one is a confirmation request uh, would sound like this. Let's just say that the, the roles were uh, reversed. And I'm the one who um, uh, would like to connect with you. And so I would say, you know, Jory, uh, I'd like some understanding about what it's like for me when I'm out in the world uh, trying to um, use credit cards. Sometimes I just get frazzled or forgetful and I pick out the wrong card or whatever. And uh, so it's really, I, I think what I'm really needing from you is just some understanding and some acceptance. So what are you hearing is important to me? just some acceptance and to be heard you're doing the best you know how thank you so that's a confirmation request i share my needs vulnerably and then i just ask what did what did they hear can you confirm that what i was trying to get across to you actually got across it's not a test of the other person whether they were listening good enough it's a test of me was i able to express my needs in a way that supported a sense of connection between us. And the only way I can tell that, or one of the only ways I can tell that, is with a confirmation request. What did you hear is important to me. So that's what we mean by a confirmation request. So you just might want to write that down uh, as a clue. Uh, ask the other person to share your needs. And a feedback request is exactly what Jory did. How do you feel when you hear me say that? would be the, the general example of a feedback request. And then a third kind of a request is an action request. Now, uh, Jory kind of started with an action request. She said, I'd like to sit down and talk to you about this. And then she kind of realized that, oh, we're probably not gonna be able to do that right now because we're in the middle of a class. So she then went, went back to the feedback request. How would you feel about doing that? So an action request is just saying exactly what you other what you want the other person to do. Okay, so now I'm going to put you back into small groups for uh, 15 minutes. It'll be tight, but we'll do it. Um, make it 13 minutes, and talk about this with your friends. See if you can support each other in having at least one request by the time you come back for each of you so you'll have a have a complete sense of the honesty part of the practice and at least the 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 sense of uh, the request
So you have 13 minutes plus one, might have to move some people around if people have fallen off the call and so forth. I think we're in good shape. Okay, so we'll see you back here in 14 minutes. So what would I want you to do? I just pull you up.